Going to the Kabiratul Ula, the beginning of the book of Al Imam Al Dhahabi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Al Imam Al Dhahabi, in his book, he did what the ulama of the Sunnah used to do. The books of the ulama of the Sunnah, they have kalam that's qalil and the adilla that are kathira. They have a little speech, but they have a lot of proofs. All of the books of the people of the past, especially in Aqidah, they used to be like that. Today it's the opposite way. The books have a lot of kalam and hardly any delil. And the delil that you will find in the book, sometimes it goes against what the people are trying to prove. So an Imam al dhahabis book is a book of proofs and only seldom would you find him making any comments. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, فَالْكَبِيرَةُ الْأُولَىٰ أَشْرْكُ بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ وَهُوَ أَنْ تَجْعَلَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ نِدًّا وَهُوَ خَلَقَكَ وَتَعْبُدُ مَعَهُ غَيْرُهُ مِنْ حَجَرٍ أَوْ بَشَرٍ أَوْ شَمْسٍ أَوْ قَمَرٍ أَوْ نَبِيٍ أَوْ شَيْخٍ أَوْ جِنِّيٍ أَوْ نَجِمٍ وَغَيْرَ ذَلِكَ he said the first kabira is that you make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The greatest and the foremost major crime is to make shirk in all of its manifestations. Shirk al-akbar or shirk al asghar He went on to say, and what is shirk? Shirk is for you to make a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's the one who created you. Shirk is for you to worship Allah and to worship that individual or for you to worship a rock or a tree or the moon or the sun or a jinn or a sheikh or a star or a, an angel. All of that is from the shirk. So to make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by slaughtering for a dead man is a kabira from the kabair is shirk for any of us to call on rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he's in his grave is not permissible in this shirk so we went on to give the adilla for that the first dalil as al imam al dhahabi does from his minhaj what's the minhaj of al imam al dhahabi in his book is similar to al imam al nawawi in his book riyadh al salihin He'll bring the chapter and then he'll explain what the chapter is about by doing what? By bringing the Quranic ayat, which is a proof that the Quran with the scholars of the past, it took precedence over the Sunnah in terms of which one goes first. Neither one should be split from the other. You have to keep the Quran and the Sunnah together. As Rasulullah says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala inni utitu al Quran wa mithluhu ma'a, len yatafarraqa hatta yalidu alayya al hawd. I've been given the Quran and what is similar to the Quran, and they will never be separated and split until the people come to meet me at the fountain. So no one can say I'm taking the Quran and not the Sunnah. I'm taking the Sunnah, not the Quran. No. But the people of the past, they used to give the taqdeem, preference to the Quran first. Memorize the Quran. You want to write something and you want to prove the point? Bring the dalil from the Quran first. So this is the minhaj of Imam al dhahabi To bring the Quran and then the ahadith that explain that and then he'll explain. The first ayat is the statement of Allah Ta'ala, إن الله لا يغفر إن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not forgive إخوتي anyone who makes shirk with him, but He will forgive anything other than that. Any and every kabair, if you're doing it, if I'm doing it, if we're falling into all of the kabair together, Allah will forgive you for that if you die, saying لا إله إلا الله. But if you stayed away from all of the kabair and you only fell into shirk, Allah is not going to forgive you for that shirk if you did it knowing what you were doing. That is not permissible. So that's the delil that shirk is a kabira from the kabair and that Allah will not forgive that sin.
That's the wa'id. The second ayah that he brings is the statement of Allah Ta'ala, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَأْوَاهُ النَّارِ Verily, the one who makes shirk with Allah, Allah has made Jannah haram upon him. Rasulullah, his mother and his father, his uncle and his grandfather, any good non-Muslim, Mother Teresa, anyone who dies saying other than La ilaha illallah after Muhammad came, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Jannah is haram and it doesn't accept that individual. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu said in an authentic hadith that's been collected by the Imam Muslim. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر He will not enter into the Jannah the one who has one speck like this pen makes when you do like this on a piece of paper whoever has a speck of kibber in his heart Jannah is haram for him he can't get in haram and kibber is not shirk kibber is not kufr in and of itself is not kufr but if you have any arrogance in your heart because of your lineage, your profession, your color, how much money you have. If you have any kibber in your heart, Jannah is haram for you until that kibber is taken out of your heart. Either you get rid of it, or Allah Azza wa push in the hellfire and burns it out off of you, or He just forgives you. But He won't allow anyone to go into Jannah who's mutakabbir. Similarly, shirk and kufr is greater than kibber. So he made the Jannah haram on the one who has shirk. He will not forgive that. The last ayah that Al-Imam Al-Zahabi brought Ikhwan is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Luqman said to his son, Inna shirk lavunmun azim. When he advised his boy and he advised his little son as it relates to the correct aqidah and he told him, verily making shirk is a tremendous zul. So Luqman advised his son and he put him on the Aqidah Sahiha. Shirk is dhul. We've mentioned a number of times the definition of Al-Hikmah. And when we talk about Al-Hikmah, we're not talking about the Sunnah Al-Hikmah. Nor are we talking about wisdom Al-Hikmah. We're talking about the Hikmah that we told you so many times. Who wants to tell us what is Al-Hikmah in Al-Islam? Akhi. Al-Hikmah is having the ability to put everything in its proper place. Saying what needs to be said, the way it should be said, to who it should be said to, and so forth and so on. You are not Hakim until you can do that. She is not Hakima until she can do that. Allah is Al-Hakim because He knows where to put everything. You are Muslim, He knew that you should be a Muslim. You have a lot of money, he knew you should have a lot of money. You don't have a lot of money, he knew that. Your mother died, he knew that was the best thing for you. So you have to be patient with your issue because Allah is Al-Hakim. And don't ask, why me? Why this? That's Al-Hikmah, putting everything in its proper place. The opposite of that, Ikhwan, putting everything in the wrong place, that is Zulm. Zulm is putting everything in the wrong place. A zulm. So Luqman said to his ibn, Inna shirk la zulmun azim. Shirk is a great zulm, putting things in the wrong place. We have a car, HT04YBK. HT04YBK, can you move your car? Zulm is putting everything in the wrong place. There are three types of zulm in Al Islam. Three types of zulm. Everyone has fallen into one of these three. The first zulm is the zulm that the person makes against himself. He oppresses himself. Rasulullah told us, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam, Ma yambaghi li mu'min, and you zilla nafsahu. Kila wa kaifa, yazillu nafsahu ya Rasulullah. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم يتعرض للبلاء لما لا يتيقه It's not acceptable, it's not befitting 
for a believing man or a believing woman to put themselves down, to lower themselves, to disgrace themselves. They said, how does the believer disgrace himself, Ya Rasulullah? He said, he puts himself in a situation that he can't handle. He puts himself in a situation that he can't handle. He's not a scholar, but he wants to make the people think he's a scholar. So he wants to debate someone who has knowledge. So he can't handle it, and he's put down as a result of that. He wants to get married, but the sister has three, four, five kids before him. More than likely, he's not going to be able to handle it. Don't oppress yourselves. So he gets married, and then Zulm comes later on. He oppressed himself. Zulm of the nafs is a person not eating, not drinking, praying too much. So do not oppress yourselves. The Prophet came into one of his homes, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and there was a woman in the home. He asked, who is that woman? Because it's the haq of the man to know what's going on in his house. For no reason, he asked, who is that woman? Aisha began to tell him, Ya Rasulullah, that's so-and-so, Fulana, her ibadah is out of this world. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, You people should worship Allah according to what you can handle. For verily Allah will not become bored with your ibadah until you become bored. So there are those people who go overboard and they oppress themselves by not eating, by not drinking. He was traveling and the man fell out. He asked them, who was that? They said, he's fasting, Ya Rasulullah. While we're traveling, he's fasting. And it's so hot. He told them, Laysa min al-bir, as fi safar. It is not righteousness that you fast while you're traveling. Have mercy upon yourself. Don't make dhulm. Don't go overboard. And how many jama'at, they go overboard by making dhulm on themselves. Rasulullah prepared to give the khutbah, ikhwati fillah. Before giving the khutbah, he saw a man standing in the sun. He asked, who was that? They said, that's Abu Israel. A Delil, you can take the kunya, Abu Israel. Someone told a brother who called his son Israel, that's Tashabbah bil Kufar. You're being like the Kufar, like the Jews. No, the man's kunya was Abu Israel. He has taken an oath, Ya Rasulullah, to stand in the sun, not to talk, and he's going to fast. Rasulullah told the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell the man to talk, to get in the sun, to sit down, and tell him to complete his fast. Standing in the sun is not from Islam, leave it alone. Not talking is not from Islam, leave it alone. To take an oath that you're going to stand up and not sit down is not from Islam, leave it alone. But to take an oath that you're going to fast is from Islam. So continue the oath. So the point is, ikhwati fillahi, dhulm and nafs. The second dhulm obviously is the dhulm that we do between ourselves. He's married, but he's going outside of the marriage looking for satisfaction. Dhulm to his wife. He was married, and he has a child or two, and he's not paying child support. He left the children and the mother by themselves. Zulm to the akhirin. He has a mother who gave birth to him, and because the mother is jahila, ignorant, and she loves the dunya, and she has a lot of kalam even, and most of the fitness from her, he cuts her off. And he chooses his wife over his mother, and she gave birth to him. Zulm to his mother. Can you make qiyas from all of that? Allah Ta'ala told us in the Hadith Al Qusi, Ya ibadi, inni haramtu ala nafsi zulm, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharrama fala tazalim. I made zulm harama myself. I don't oppress none of you people. Not one bit. I made it haram upon myself that I will not oppress a single person. Every judgment that I give you in every situation that you're in, it is not zulm to you. Because I made it haram upon myself, tabarak wa ta'ala, that I will not oppress any of you. So do not 
oppress one another. And the last type of dhulm, ikhwan, is the dhulm that the person has as it relates to Allah Azza wa Jal. They ask Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu dham a'dham qal, an taj'al lillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqaka. Ya Rasulullah, which sin is the worst? He said that you will make with Allah a partner, and Allah created you. Like now, ikhwan, this is the season to be jolly according to these kuffar. So now a man or a woman, they make minimum wage in their job. They may even be on public assistance. In an attempt to make sacrifices for their children, they go beyond the call of duty and they begin to buy gifts for their children for Christmas. And they're poor. They don't even have the money to do that. But they're going to try to practice their religion. It's the season to be jolly according to them. And then after purchasing five, six, seven hundred pounds worth of gifts that they don't have the ability to afford, they turn around and tell the child, Santa Claus brought that for you. Which person in his right mind, which parent in his right mind would do good for your child and then your child comes and he thanks the neighbor for what his mother had to do, wake up every two or three hours in his first formidable months after being born. The mother has to constantly get up. She can't get eight hours worth of sleep in the first few months. And then the child comes around and thanks someone else for giving birth to him. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثُلُ الْأَعْلَى And Allah is the, prim and the, the, the extreme example in that Allah has given an individual life and He's given him all of these good things from the khayrat and the tayyibat and He turns around and He says Isa ibn Maryam, He did it for me. The son did it for me. That is the worst type of dhul. That's the statement and the meaning of Luqman to his son إِنَّ الشِّرْقْ لَظُمٌ عَظِيمٌ for you to make shirk with Allah, it is dhulm azim. Our friends, our brothers, our guests who were here for the first time. They're here for the first time. Wallahi, we don't want to run you away. We don't want to run you away. But at the same time, we don't want to stand before Allah yawm al-qiyamah for not telling you. Loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means following him and taking his sunnah. Loving Rasulullah does not mean going overboard and making dua to Rasulullah. That is shirk and that's dhul. Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Ali, Ya Ali. That is shirk and that's dhul. And for that reason, when they said to Rasulullah and they made him a partner by saying it is as Allah wants and as you want, Ya Rasulullah. This light is on because you want it on, Ya Rasulullah. This person is born because you wanted him born, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah took his finger, Sharifa, and pointed in the man's chest and he said to that man, Aja'altani nillahi nidda? Have you made me a partner with Allah? Just say, MashaAllah, by himself. This light is on because Allah wanted it on. Not because the man put it on, not because I want it on. Because Allah wants it on. So to ask anyone other than Allah, as the Imam said, a Nabi, a Jinn, an angel, any of that is shirk and it's not permissible. Now, for the statement of Al Imam Al Dhahabi, he mentioned those ayat of the Quran and then he went on to explain the ayat or to make a point and he said, very important statement, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. فَمَنْ أَشْرَكَ بِاللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى ثُمَّ مَاتَ مُشْرِكًا فَهُوَ مِنْ أَصْحَابِ النَّارِ قَطْعًا كَمَا مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَاتَ مُؤْمِنًا فَهُوَ مِنْ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَإِنْ عُذِّبًا Pay attention to this point, Ikhwan. Al-Imam al-Dhahabi says, So therefore, based upon these ayat, whoever makes shirk with Allah and then he dies as a mushrik, he will be from the Ashabu Nar Qata'an. No choice. La Mahala. He's going to be in the hellfire because Allah made Jannah Haram for the one who makes shirk. And in contrast, the one who believes in Allah and he dies as a believer, he will be from the people of the Jannah even if he is, even if he is punished. 
So ikhwati fillah, pay attention to these two points right here. Number one, an Imam al dhahabi is teaching us, those of us who are part of this jama'ah, that jama'ah, the khilafah, jihad, these issues like this we hear every week, issues that are from al-Islam. And Imam al dhahabi is showing us in a practical way how the ulama of al-Islam started with the most important issues. He didn't start with jihad. He didn't start with the khilafah, not taking care of the khilafah, leaving off jihad intentionally as a kabira from the kabair. مَن لَمْ يَغْزُ وَلَمْ يُحَدِّثْ نَفْسُهُ بِالْغَزْوِ ثُمَّ مَاتَ مَاتَ عَلَى شُعْبَةٍ مِنْ نِفَاقٍ Whoever dies and he never participated in jihad anywhere. Since he's been living, there are persons, places where there were real jihad. Ulama gave fatwa, it's jihad over there, and he's living. He never made jihad, nor did he say to himself, I want to make jihad, I'm just looking for an opportunity to go and do it. Nor did he say that. And he died like that, never making jihad, and never saying to himself, I want to make jihad. Rasulullah said he dies on one of the branches of hypocrisy. So not to what to make jihad and not to make jihad is a kabira from the kabair. Why didn't he mention that? Number one. Because that's not what we understand from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not what we understand from the Quran. We understand that the mujahid who puts a tamim, a tamim around his arm, he has no jihad. The one who establishes a khilafah, but the Muslims are worshipping this and that and this and that. What is that khilafah? So the very first issue is al-aqidah ikhwan, al-aqidah. The second thing is, al-imam al-dhahabi is making a point that we have to understand and that is anyone who makes shirk knowingly in his shirk al-akbar, he dies on that, he's from the ashab al nar Anyone who dies doing any and everything, all of the kabair combined, but he dies saying la ilaha illallah, that person will go to Jannah. That person will go to Jannah even if you don't like it. Despite your nose, he's going to Jannah. As long as he doesn't make shirk. So you can think of the worst sins, homosexuality. May Allah save us from that. May Allah save us from that crime. And Imam al dhahabi brings this in his book. A person falls into that and he dies saying, La ilaha illallah. Allah Azza wa is going to put him in Jannah. So that is a point of aqidah. So this is the Salafiya of Al Imam Al Dhahabi. Finally, he said, Ikhwan, in this chapter, وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَلَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِأَكْبَرِ الْكَبَائِرِ قَالُوا بَلَى يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ الْإِشْرَاقُ بِاللَّهِ وَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ اجْتَنِبُوا السَّبَى الْمُوبِقَاتِ فَذَكَرَ مِنْهَا الشِّرْكِ وَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ بَدَّلَ دِينَهُ فَاقْتُلُوا وَهُوَ حَدِيثٌ صَحِيحٌ He brought these three a hadith and he ended the first chapter. In addition to the ayahs that have preceded, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned the hadith. Shall I not tell you about this major sins, the biggest of the major sins? They said, what is it? He said that you make shirk. So that's the delil. The second hadith, stay away from the seven major sins. And he mentioned the first one is shirk. And then finally the hadith, مَنْ بَدَّلَ دِينَهُ فَاقْتُلُوهُ Whoever changes his religion, then kill him. Whoever changes his religion, then kill him. That's not talking about the Yahudi who changes his religion from Yahudiyah to Nasraniyah. It's not talking about the Christian who changes his religion from Christianity to Judaism. It's not talking about the Magian who changes his religion from a Magian to being a person who doesn't believe in Allah at all. This is talking about the Muslim, man or woman, who changes their religion from Al-Islam to anything else, kill him in the Islamic State. Because he has made a form of shirk, and that he has legislated for himself what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said was haram. And it's haram for him to change his religion. So the Muslim who changes his religion, the penalty for that is death because he said it was halal. He made it stihlal. He said it's okay for me to change my religion. So that's the kufr. He followed his hawa and it became the God for him. 
So those ahadith and other than them, they show the importance of being a person who is on Tawheed and being a person who's away from falling into a shirk. The Prophet told us, Ikhwan, about the time that we're dealing with Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's going to get worse. When he said in the hadith that's been collected by Imam Ahmed on the authority of Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhuma. He said, يَدْرُسُ islam كَمَا يَدْرُسْ وَشُّ ثَوْبَ حَتَّى لَا يُدْرَى مَا صِيَامْ وَلَا صَلَاةْ وَلَا نُسُقْ وَلَا صَدَقَ وَيُسْرَى عَلَى كِتَابِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي لَيْلَةٍ وَاحِدًا فَلَا يَبْقَى فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْهُ آيَةٍ وَتَبْقَى مِنَ النَّاسِ تَوَاعُفُ مِنْهُ الشيخ الكبير والعجوز يقولون أدركنا آباءنا على هذه الكلمة يقولون لا إله إلا الله فنحن نقولها رسول الله said the time is going to come and it's fastly approaching where Al-Islam is going to fade away just the way the embroiderment on your clothes fade away you have a brown shirt a blue shirt when it's brand new, it's solid blue, solid brown. The more you wash it, it fades more and more and more. Islam is about to fade away like that from the people, the way the thobe fades away. To the point where the Muslims are not going to know what is Siyam of Ramadan. They won't even know Ramadan. They won't know the Salat. They won't know Hajj. And they won't know the Zakat. And in one day, the ayat of the Qur'an, the Qur'an will be taken away from the people in one night to the point where there won't remain with the people a single ayat. Yaseen is an ayat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim to some of the ulama of Islam is an ayat of the Qur'an. Qul huwa Allahu ahad is an ayat of the Qur'an. Afillah, shak is an ayat from the Qur'an. None of that will remain. Saad is an ayat from the Qur'an. Taha. None of that will remain in the earth in one night. But there will remain two types of people. An old man and an old woman. They will say, we found our mothers and fathers saying this word, so we're saying this word. They used to say, La ilaha illallah, so we're saying, La ilaha illallah. And that will suffice them during that time. The fact that they didn't make shirk, they didn't pray because they didn't know salah. Their parents neglected them. So they're ignorant and they're excused because of their ignorance. And those are the worst people who are going to come. Those people who the hour won't be established until you won't hear the word Allah, Allah. People won't make salah. People won't say taqillah. People won't say I believe in Allah. People won't say Ya Allah. Allah's name won't be mentioned in the earth. لا تقوم الساعة إلا على أشد الناس شرورا. The hour won't be established except on the worst people. They won't even say Allah, Allah. So this is the description of the Muslims during that time. But those people who say لا إله إلا الله إخوات في الله during that time. La ilaha illallah is going to benefit them because it is the miftah that will save and protect you from a shirk, staying in the hellfire from forever. Rasulullah used to fight the people for the kalima of la ilaha illallah. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam called to it for 13 years. He was sure to plant the seed and the understanding of la ilaha illallah in the minds of the people. And I say, there is no jihad. If we were making jihad right now, and there were a group of people, and they had a tamat, tamima on their arm, our primary jihad would now be to tell him, don't do that as our brother. And if he refuses, we have to get away from that individual. Because we may be destroyed for the shirk that's taking place here. So there's no khilafah for the Muslim nation if our aqidah isn't right. So that's the first chapter of Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi's book, Al-Kaba'ir, the Kitab of Al-Shirk Billahi Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We're not going to get into the second chapter because it is a long chapter and it is the chapter of Al-Qatl. 
murdering people. Like the Muslims are murdering people here in Birmingham. He's a crackhead, so he murders another Muslim because they're in that life. He sells crack, so he murders another Muslim because he owes him money or he wants to move on his territory. His sister ran off and got married or something happened in a marriage, so they call it an honor killing. And there's no honor in that type of killing for you to take the law into your own hand or to kill someone who doesn't deserve to be killed. Driving around in your car and you're not paying attention to what you're doing and you kill people is a serious issue. Selling Hummer, having a store where you sell Hummer and people drink Hummer and drive or drink Hummer and take ecstasy and then they go to the party and die, drop dead from a heart attack. You help to kill them. So the next chapter is the chapter of Al Qatl. Two people becoming upset with each other and they start to fight and his niyad is not to kill him. But he punches him and he falls and he hits his head the wrong way and he kills him. That's the next chapter and it's a pretty extensive chapter so we're not going to get into it at all inshallah ta'ala.